<clears throat> I told you it was ridiculous. <laughs> um, so I learned a new song this week. Um, you may recall that uh, we sing a lot of um, what I call paperless music at the Edge House, unaccompanied. I teach it. They learn parts, etc. cetera. Um, and I learned one this week sort of by accident, uh, and it has been just on a loop uh, in my heart for days. Uh, I just, I keep humming it, and people around me are like, what are you, what are you humming? What's going on? Um, so I'm going to teach it to you so you can be stuck in your heart too. Great. Um, so it goes like this. I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you. That's it. <laughs> it's pretty simple. <laughs> Listen again. I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you. Sing that back to me. I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you. Another time. I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you. That's so good. Isn't that nice? You sound so good all together with your voices. It gives me chills. We could just stop right there. Um, I do, however, want uh, some lower voices. I have a second part for you. Um, It's beautiful. (laughs) Same note starts. Whatever note that was that I started on. (laughs) I I think that was my note. Great. So your part goes, instead of going up, it goes down. I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you. Whatever low voices want to sing that. Ready? I will be your standing stone. That sounds so good. I will stand by you. One more time. I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you. Oh, that was so good. Beautiful. Perfect. Hey, Ken, can you do that part real quick? Can you stand over here? Okay, great. It's helpful to have two people. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to gesture this way as though this is the high part. I will sing. It, it doesn't matter. He's singing the low part. I'm singing the high part, right? So let's, we'll start with the primary. And we'll start with that, and we'll add you in the second time around. Okay? So everybody sings the main part. Whatever. What notes do we start on? I will be. <laughs> I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you. Almost everybody keeps singing that. I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you. I got with you. I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you. That's it. You got it. I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you one more. I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you. Thank you. There's a third part, but I won't teach you that one. Uh, it's beautiful, right? Um, even if you forget the notes or whatever, like just the idea of being someone's standing stone, standing right next to, so solid and strong. And that, the song itself is beautiful, but it's been resonating with me. I think that's why it's kind of stuck um, in my heart, is it resonates with me on so many levels. Um, I need Pat's assistance now. Uh, (laughs) One of the things I was remembering as I was hearing this was a few years ago, we went to New York City for a pilgrimage, for a mission trip, and it got colder and colder and colder that week. We didn't look at the weather, apparently, and, um, and we weren't dressed for it, and so every time we were outside, we would have to penguin. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> um, like a whole group of people doing that, because that's how we kept warm, right? We had to stand by each other, close to each other, to support, Right? It reminds me of uh, a board game that I have, of course, um, called Stonehenge in the Sun, um, which you don't have to worry about how the game is played, but it's got these little, like, standing stones that are part of the, the board game. It reminds me then of, of the ancient, ancient stones um, in the Hocking Hills specifically that have fallen off the cliffs and are in the valleys. And there's these huge, huge boulders that 
are so old that it's not just moss, it's like whole trees are growing off of them. Um, the stones are called slumps, which is kind of hilarious, but, uh, and they're still moving. <laughs> you can't see it, but they're so old and so massive, so substantial. And then this song reminds me of sitting with uh, my son when he has been sick, you know, and throwing up and the whole thing, like we do as parents. And it reminds me of when we were in Hocking Hills the other weekend and 11 of the 13 of us, students and me, got sick with a stomach virus. (laughs) So sermon for another day, perhaps. Um, But the third person to get sick messaged me at one in the morning, you know, texted me and said, I now have it. I was like, do you need me to come down and sit with you? And they said, yes, please. So I came down and sat with them in the bathroom for hours and just that experience of sitting with someone when they're ill. And remembering my father doing that for me when I was a child. You know? You can't fix it. All you can do is be there. Solid. It reminds me of sitting in my car on Friday night with a student who had been attacked for an hour in silence so that they could calm down and come back to themselves, just to be present with them. I can't fix it, but I can be with them. It reminds me of Good Shepherd being with, standing with our LGBTQ friends and members by opening our marriage policy. It reminds me of, and I've said this many times, Good Shepherd standing with, being with the Edge House all these years. We don't bring y'all any money. (laughs) But you stand with us as we stand with those students. It reminds me of uh, a former member who supported his wife while she died of cancer. I mean, of course he did. But while she fought tooth and nail, he was right there. Her standing stone. The standing stone that we say in this song that we are, it's about slowness and calm and perspective. And it's about sort of a a level playing field where we're not above or below, we we just are. Sometimes all we can do is stand with each other. And I think God is singing this to us as well. God is with us, singing, I will be your standing stone. And with is the key word there. Not above, not below, not like Psalm 22, I am a worm and no man. It's understandable. It's a real feeling. We've probably all been there at some point. We've done something. We go, oh, I'm the worst. I love the Psalms for that because they, they reflect so much of our human experience. But that's not the goal, that particular worm and no man. The idea of humility that Jesus is speaking of, and I think, I think it said the humble life up on the screen, it's not about that huge high or huge low. It's a clear vision of who you really are. It's not standing up in front of everyone. It's not sitting in a corner. It's standing next to, standing tall and beside and with, supporting, together leaning towards God. So who is Jesus talking to here? Um, Typically, he'll say something like he said to the Pharisees or he said to the scribes or he was sitting with his disciples and he said blah, blah, blah. He is speaking to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous. Some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous. Maybe that calls to mind someone in particular in your life. (laughs) As I say that, you're like, oh, I know who that is. I have to say, the disciples and the believers are just as vulnerable to pride and self-righteousness as the Pharisees. The disciples and the believers. One way to, to study the Bible is to put yourself in the story and to ask yourself who you identify with. So do you identify with the tax collector who sort of seems to sort of be the hero of this story? Yes, no, I don't, I don't be proud about all this stuff. I, I sit in the corner and I say, oh, I'm so terrible. Maybe, maybe you do. Do you identify with Jesus as the one who's like, oh no, I see you. I see you. See what's going on over here. 
Do you identify with the disciples who were listening to this story, having maybe multiple experiences? Anyone here want to identify with the ones who trusted in themselves that they were righteous? Now, of course not. <laughs> He's ridiculous. And that religious leader is a caricature. None of us are really like that with that twirling mustache and all. Except sometimes. Maybe a little bit. We got it figured out. Trusting in our own righteousness. Trusting in our own goodness. Like, sometimes we feel like we've justified ourselves with our works. We're already as holy as we need to be. We don't need to apologize when we're in the wrong. We don't need liberation because we're not trapped by anything. Holier than our neighbors. Got it figured out. It's not very comfortable to notice that stuff in ourselves. But trusting in our own righteousness separates us from our neighbors, keeps us from standing by them. This guy, this... uh, Religious leader has enough religion to be virtuous, but not enough to be humble. Hmm. This Christianity that we subscribe to, that we come to participate in every Sunday and ideally participate in every moment of our lives, this Christianity is not a religion for people who have figured it out. It's for us fools who keep messing it up and who love the world so much that it hurts. This is not a museum for saints, but a hospital for sinners. While noodling this week, I accidentally came across uh, another song, Leonard Cohen's Amen. This is not one that I was familiar with, and I think it must have come from later in his life based on the sound of his voice. The chorus of this is, Tell me again when I'm clean and sober. Tell me again when I've seen through the horror. Tell me again, tell me over and over. Tell me that you'll want me then. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Students were laughing at me. I was writing the sermon at the Edge House, and there were a couple of people around, and I was listening to it, and just every couple of seconds I'd go, Oh, Leonard! <sighs> that make a right song. <laughs> He's almost begging in this song. Tell me again that I'm lovable, that I'm worthy that I'm part of something. And he's so honest about his imperfections. He always has been in his songwriting. His unrighteousness, you might say, is sort of always on display. There's a prayer that we say in the Episcopal Church. Um, It's called the Prayer for Humble Access uh, that is in the, um, the Eucharistic prayer in the right one. So I know you guys aren't Episcopalian. We have this like right one, right two situation. Right one is like the old school stuff. So like these and thighs kind of style. Um, And then right to is the more modern translation. Um, And it's not just that terminology, like there are some different prayers. And the right one, after we have blessed the bread and wine, we've broken the fraction, right? Right before you come up, you say this prayer. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness. Can you imagine saying that every week, right before you receive the bread and wine? <sighs> right one's kind of heavy. Before receiving the food for our journey, for out there, in here, we remind ourselves of our connection to each other and to God. We remember that communion means God with us, in us, in a very deep way, inextricably, making us holy, showing us the path. We do not presume to come forward believing ourselves to be perfected, to have got it right. But we do believe in God's mercy and joy when we are trying 
to be good and right. Thomas Merton says, God, we believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And so we stand next to each other, next to our neighbors and our friends and our enemies out there, knowing our failings, knowing that God too is standing next to us, strong and eternal as a stone. So I invite you to sing with me again, whichever part you want to sing, it doesn't matter. You can stand up and sing that part of it. I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you. I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you. I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you. I will be your standing soul. I will stand by you one more. I will be your standing soul. I will stand by you. Amen.